Okay, so uh, we just I just wrapped up the uh, lecture on um, projections. Uh, projections are, are a really cool uh, uh, concept in linear algebra, um, but the truth is that they're kind of uh, 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 from a calculation standpoint kind of annoying. Um, but luckily, we have some code that might will help us. So um, the, in the first uh, cell here on, on the Sage uh, portion of this lecture, um, you'll find code where um, all we need to input here is a basis of whatever space we're interested in. So here uh, I've listed three vectors. So evidently we're looking at some three-dimensional space. And um, what the code will do is it will tell us what basis we just put in. So we can verify whether or not we're inputting data correctly. And then um, it will spit out the projection matrix onto that space. Um, so it does all the ugly calculation for us. Remember in the projection formula, um, the way we calculate a projection matrix is we find a basis for the space, put those vectors, uh, basis vectors into the columns of a matrix, maybe called X. Then the projection formula is X times the inverse of the Gramian times X transpose. So that's three matrices we have to multiply together. But the hardest part is actually inverting that middle matrix, the Gramian of X. Um, this code will do all of that for us. So let's click evaluate here and see what happens. So here um, uh, it's telling me that uh, the space V that I care about has basis given by the columns of this matrix. So those are the basis vectors that I input. And then um, the projection matrix onto this space is equal to this um, uh, uh, matrix here. So uh, it automatically did the projection matrix uh, calculation for me. That's great. Um, remember, like the, the some of the properties we stated about projection matrices, um, they're always symmetric. So if we stare hard enough at this matrix, we realize that this matrix is symmetric. Um, they're always idempotent, which is not quite so easy to see just by looking at it, but this is uh, uh, idempotent, meaning if we square the matrix, we don't change the matrix. Um, and also the trace is equal to the dimension of the space. So here the space has three basis vectors. So if you take the trace of this projection matrix, you should get three. And if we look at this for a minute, we realize that's actually what we get. 11 over 20 plus 19 over 20 is what? Uh, 30 over 20. And then another 11 over 20 plus another 19 over 20 is another 30 over 20. So that's 30 plus 30 is 60 over 20, which is three which is the dimension of the space. So that's cool. Um, another thing that we want to do sometimes is we want to actually use the projection matrix to project a vector. So here I have the same code as before, but if we also uh, define a vector um, that we want to project onto the space, this code will do that, that for us. So uh, if I click evaluate here, um, I have exactly the data from before. V has a basis given by the columns of this matrix. The projection matrix has been calculated for me. And now this last print statement tells me what the projection of the vector I care about, which is 4, 5, 14, 1, onto the space V is. And that projection is negative 5, 2, 5, negative 2. So that's nice because it takes the burden off of us to do lots and lots of uh, rote calculation. Um, finally, the last thing uh, we mentioned in the uh, lecture was this uh, big statement about orthogonality. The, the, the big thing to remember is that if we have our projection matrix onto a space and add it to the projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement, that sum will equal the identity matrix. We can see that explicitly in the code I've written here. So in the code I've written here, um, what we do is we define any matrix, and then this code will print out a bunch of information about all four of the fundamental subspaces, including the projection matrices onto those spaces. So let's take a look here. So uh, the matrix that I have as a default here is this three by four matrix. Uh, I have that matrix, it's reduced form and the reduced form it's of its transpose for convenience. And then I have here some information about the column space of this matrix. So I have uh, two bases written down here. Um, I have uh, the dimension of the column space, which in this case is two. And then we have the projection matrix onto the column space, which is calculated for us. So that's nice. Um, we also have the row space. So the row space of this matrix is a subspace of R4. Uh, we have some basic information about the space and then its projection matrix, which is interesting. Uh, the, we have the null space data. Uh, so here we have a, a basis and then the dimension 
and then its per, uh, projection matrix. And finally, we have the left null space. Again, we have some basic data and the projection matrix. The thing I want everyone to uh, appreciate here is remember that the four fundamental subspaces pair off into orthogonal complements. The, um, uh, uh, the null space is the orthogonal complement of the row space, and the left null space is the orthogonal complement of the column space. That is actually represented in this data if we look at the projection matrices. Um, here we have the row space and its projection matrix. If we add it to the projection matrix onto the null space, it might look like a bunch of complicated arithmetic, but what we realize is that we're just getting the identity matrix. Uh, 5 over 131 plus 126 over 131 is 1. And we'll find that if we take the diagonal of each of these uh, uh, matrices and add them together, um, we always get 1. And then if we look off the diagonal uh, and add the corresponding entries, we find that we're just always adding a number to its negative. So like 2 over 131 plus negative 2 over 131 equals 0. So the sum of those two matrices is the identity matrix, which is exactly what we expect because the, um, the row space is the orthogonal complement of the null space. And then also we know that the column space is the orthogonal complement of the left null space. So when we add those two projection matrices together, we expect to get the identity matrix and we do here as well. So hopefully you find these uh, 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 pieces of code useful. You should definitely be using them, while, especially while you're looking at uh, uh, the quiz. So um, hope you enjoyed projections.